Alana Greer. We're here in my office in Taos, New Mexico, where I practice as a licensed massage therapist, an integrative health coach, and yoga and mindfulness teacher. Today we're going to explore the therapeutic benefits of using tuning forks in sound therapy sessions. We'll look at which tones are therapeutic, as well as which ones to avoid. And then we'll close with a demonstration of a tuning fork session using SWB tuning forks. All things in the universe are vibrating at some frequency. From the resonance of planetary orbits to sand organized into perfect geometrical patterns by the sound of a tone, everything has a resonant frequency that it naturally vibrates at. Today, modern science recognizes everything we perceive and know to exist to be frequency. When a strong vibration causes something else to vibrate at its frequency, a resonance occurs. A wine glass with its hollow shape is very resonant. When you tap the glass and listen to the frequency, you can hear its resonance or pitch. To shatter the glass, a singer's voice has to match that pitch for a few seconds at a loudness of 105 decibels, which is much louder than the usual 50 decibels of conversational speech. It's actually the minute defects in the glass which make it shatter. But we have known for decades in Western medicine that there are beneficial applications to this form of resonance. Gary Wade, physicist and inventor, says, Every microbe has at least one ultrasound frequency, which can destroy the microbe easily. Naturally occurring frequencies, such as the resonant field of the earth, have been found to have health benefits. While human-made electromagnetic frequencies, or EMFs, radiated by transmission towers, microwaves, and digital wireless technology, have a very detrimental effect on our health. Today we're going to look at how our health is impacted by frequency in both positive and negative ways. Joseph Campbell reminds us, the goal of life is to make your heartbeat match the beat of the universe, to match your nature with nature. For thousands of years, yoga practitioners have understood the profound effect that sound has on our well-being. Nada Yoga uses sound to reduce stress, focus the mind, and invoke spiritual awakenings. Patanjali wrote in his Yoga Sutras of the importance of chanting Om as a shortcut to Samadhi, or spiritual absorption. There is a reason why all cultures from all over the world make music. We experience music touching us emotionally when we hear uplifting music, like Vivaldi's Four Seasons. The human brain and nervous system are hardwired to distinguish music from noise and to respond to rhythm and repetition, tones and tunes. These days, the music we most often hear in our modern society is tuned to A440. This is only eight vibrations per second difference from the therapeutic A432 tuning. But this small difference seems to be remarkable in many ways. While A440 tuning is musical and can be enjoyable to listen to, it's far from therapeutic. 432 is said to be mathematically consistent with the golden mean, as well as the frequencies of the earth, otherwise known as the Schumann resonance. The majority of ancient instruments that have been unearthed from ancient Egypt to ancient Greece were tuned to A432. We also see this with sacred instruments for meditation from Buddhist, Taoist, and yogic traditions around the world. From the Greek mysteries, Orpheus, the god of music, tuned his instruments to A432 specifically, and Pythagorean mysteries are centered around 432, including geometry, music, and mathematics. The Fibonacci sequence is a number sequence that goes on to infinity. The space between these numbers gives us the golden ratio. This sequence unifies the properties of space, time, light, gravity, and our genetic makeup with our DNA code. Pythagoras has been credited historically to be the first to use the golden ratio, or phi, in a musical scale. But we hear this golden ratio scale from indigenous music from all over the world. 
Recordings of shamanic healing ceremonies demonstrate the shamans are singing in tune to A432, even though they have never been exposed to Western music. Many of the great composers from the 16th to the 20th century have preferred A432 tuning. Bach developed the well-tempered system in the 18th century. In the 1880s, the great composer Giuseppe Verde attempted to set Europe's standard tuning to A432 to protect the voices and health of the singers. Standard tuning was different from region to region until 1953 when A440 Hz became the standard tuning worldwide by the ISO. Since the standardization of A440 tuning worldwide, singing has been more damaging to vocalists. At a conference in 1988, the Schiller Institute and some of the world's most highly regarded classical singers and instrumentalists demanded a return from our current high-pitched tuning of A440 to 432. When tuned to 432, musical composition becomes as lawful as the orbits of the planets in the solar system because they're following the same natural laws. The ancients considered music to be a healing art. Many indigenous cultures today still do. When we tune our instruments to A440, we are not only doing damage to our vocal cords, but also to our ears. The cochlea is a spiraled shaped part of the ear filled with water. It converts acoustic impulses into electric signals. The shape of the cochlea is based on the principles of phi, as is 432 tuning. This golden ratio, or phi, exists within flower petals, trees, seeds, shells, galaxies. It is truly the mathematical language of the universe. It exists in traditional and therapeutic music tuned to A432, but not in our standardized tuning. Experts including Maria Reynold and Rudolf Steiner claimed A440 tuning disassociates the connection of consciousness to the body and creates antisocial conditions in humanity. Being exposed to the Earth's frequency is absolutely integral to us as humans. We feel it when we're in nature. The first Russian cosmonaut who went to space left Earth's atmosphere strong and healthy. He returned to Earth in near critical condition only an hour and 48 minutes later. It was discovered that the critical missing element for him that caused his condition was lack of the Earth's pulsed electromagnetic field, or PEMF, otherwise known as the Schumann resonance. Since then, NASA has developed many PEMF therapies, which are used as medical devices for vascular therapy. Our range of hearing prevents us from hearing the Schumann resonance at between 6 to 8 hertz. We usually hear sound waves between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Below 20 hertz, sounds are infrasonic, and frequencies above 20,000 hertz are ultrasonic. Both infrasonic and ultrasonic frequencies have been known to have healing properties and have been used medicinally. Ultrasound has been used for decades in medicine, from breaking up gallstones to relaxing muscles. We are also exposed to low electromagnetic frequencies, or EMFs, that have a negative impact on our health. The electrical devices around you run on alternating current at 60 Hz. This upsets the brain and nervous system and destabilizes the body's electromagnetic field. Some of us are more sensitive than others to EMFs. What we attune to can have a negative effect on our health when the frequency is not in harmony with nature. Human-made EMFs are having a negative effect on all life on Earth. The small doses of electromagnetic contamination may not immediately affect the body. But over time, a continuously disturbed electronic pool can have profound effects on our health. 432 hertz tuning vibrates in harmony with the Earth's frequency. It unifies the property of light, time, space, matter, gravity, and magnetism with our own biology. We sync back with our natural circadian rhythms and aid our immune system, improving our sense of well-being. Nikola Tesla stated, If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, 
frequency, and vibration. Tesla is finally attracting attention more than 70 years after his death. He changed the face of the planet in many ways. Inventions of Tesla include x-rays, radio, electric motors, wireless communications. The world would not be the same without his many inventions and discoveries. Tesla studied with Swami Vivekananda, who in the 1890s was the first yogi to bring Vedic philosophy to the West. Tesla used ancient Sanskrit terminology in his descriptions of natural phenomena. His concepts during the following years were greatly influenced by the teachings of Swami Vivekananda. Today, Western medicine recognizes in a coherent heart, the brain's alpha wave activity is synchronized to our cardiac cycle. Nikolai Tesla recognized this in the early 1900s when he stated, Alpha waves in the human brain are between 6 and 8 hertz. The electrical resonance of the earth is between 6 and 8 hertz. Our entire biological system, the brain and the earth itself, work on the same frequencies. He stated, if we can control that resonance system electronically, we can directly control the entire mental system of humankind. The frequencies that we are exposed to from a massive electromagnetic grid is not only affecting the mental system of humankind, but also the birds, bees, and animals. Ironically, Tesla would not have wanted to see this happen, and if some of his inventions had come to fruition, it wouldn't have. 432 Hertz unites you with the universal harmony, making sound medicine. The laws governing quantum physics demonstrates that everything in the universe is made up of vibrational fields and the human body is no exception. When disease and illness are present, they may manifest as chemical imbalances, but underlying this is an electromagnetic imbalance that's altered the specific vibrational frequencies of all molecules, cells, tissues, and organs within the body. Properly retuning the body to its original frequency brings it into balance and restores its natural harmonic resonance. Illness either doesn't manifest or it's resolved. Nada Yoga recognizes the human body is sustained by life force energy, which is referred to prana or chi in Chinese medicine. This energy, which has electromagnetic characteristics, travels through nadis or meridian pathways inside the physical body. It feeds all the main organs, glands, and ultimately every muscle, nerve, tissue, and cell in the body. The meridian system is comprised of 12 principal meridians that act like distribution paths for the energy and eight meridians which act like vessels to store the energy inside the body. These are known as chakras and chakra means wheel. They are part of the system of energy. Our seven chakras are said to run along the largest channel along the spine called shishumna. The chakras are said to resonate at specific frequencies or notes. Ancient yogis recognized all our nadis are sensitive to sound and function through vibration. The human body was designed to heal itself. When a person is sick, they have a lower frequency than a healthy person. Most of us are surrounded by a 60 hertz grid nearly 24 seven, even when we're outside. These low frequencies pull our energy down and pull our brain waves up. We all feel it after hours in front of the computer or on the phone. Anti-coherent energies such as 60 hertz frequencies, as well as 440 tuning, can profoundly upset the body when our bioelectric field is already weakened. Even thoughts and feelings have a vibratory quality that forms a measurable frequency. A negative mental state can lower a person's frequency by 10 to 12 megahertz. Pathogens have a low frequency. Pollution lowers the body's frequency and processed and canned foods have a frequency of zero they greatly diminish a person's frequency. The good news is positive thoughts can also serve to raise our frequency by 15 megahertz. 
A substance with a higher frequency can also raise a lower frequency due to the principle of entrainment. Properly retuning the body to its original frequency brings it into balance and restores its natural harmonic resonance. Albert Einstein stated, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. The science of sound is credited to have begun with Ernst Chaldney's famous Chaldney figures. He created by playing tones through a plate of metal with sand on it. The vibration from the different frequencies created a whole range of mandala-like patterns with the sand, and this has been replicated over and over. It was his successor, Hans Jenny, who termed the science cymatics. Dr. Valerie Hunt was a researcher and university professor at UCLA. She researched the relationship between changes in our bioenergy fields, our behavior, and our experience. This is an image from a video Dr. Hunt made of a yoga teacher, Oming. The video shows off a biomedical device she developed called the Aura Meter, which is demonstrating with this image that as the woman ohms, you can see her biofield increase and ripple out, as Patanjali suggested thousands of years ago. When we look at the concept of mantra and the over 5,000 year old practice of yoga, and we combine modern evidence from cymatics, the mandala-like patterns that sound creates in water molecules, we can imagine how the right frequencies can have very beneficial effects on our well-being. Each cell of the body resonating with healing frequencies, just as the droplets of water in a cymatic experiment, becomes like an ocean of resonance when you consider the body's over 70% water. There is no doubt that frequency affects us. A440 tuning has done damage to our vocal cords and our ears. We're all being pulled from our natural resonance by EMFs and this 60 hertz grid around us. Countering the effects of this can be done by reconnecting with nature using PEMF devices and tuning yourself with A432. There are a lot of wonderful resources I will include in the info beneath this video, but let's get on to the treatment. 